Yippee Kaya, yay, mother truckers. We have a pose, successful pose. Now, here's what not to do when you're trying to buy, build, or upgrade your first PC is to not get the wrong part, which is not compatible. So I've got Jamie with me, and he called me up yesterday to ask for some help to help with upgrading his existing PC, right? And he said that he did it. This is the second time he was just upgrading some parts and nothing was coming up. Turns on and turns off after a few seconds. So I uh, got him over here today to say, we'll help you do this, hopefully. And then I found the problem within the first few minutes. Huge mistake. Let me talk you through it. Hey, Tax, and welcome to Zash from Hill My Tech. On this channel, we'll help you ha develop a better relationship with your tech. So, subscribe and enable the bell notification icon so I can help you go from newbie to techie. Let me introduce you to the parts. So, this is Jamie. Hi. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. What am I doing? And what he had before, um, he had a motherboard from uh, Asus, which was the Maximus 8 Hero. He had a CPU, which was the i7-7700K, which is still on there right now. EVGA 750p2 power supply, fully modular. Uh, he had a 1080 uh, from Asus Strix, but he's got a 2080, so nice upgrade. He had a different case before, but now he's got the Lian Li PC OC something. Okay, very nice, uh, nice um, windowed panel. Obviously, Lian PC cases are really, really nice. As cooler, he had the NZXT X62 Kraken, if I'm not mistaken, yeah? And uh, he's got 16 gigabyte of uh, um, DDR4 G skill there, so no problem, M.2 SATA, and then he's got a couple of drives or one drive at the back there, so not a major problem. Now, the big mistake he made, the processor is a 7th generation Intel processor, 7700K. It is not supported on the motherboard, which is the Asus Maximus 11. That's a big problem. And the reason we know this is because as soon as I ask him um, whether he checked the CPU support list, he said yes, he did. Some other people did it. Unfortunately, I went on to the website from Asus for the motherboard, and it turns out, nope it is not supported. This motherboard only supports 8th and 9th generation. Bummer. I was, I was just looking for a, a motherboard that like, that was a motherboard, because mine broke, well, it didn't break, but one of the pins in my USB snapped, and I was like, kind of worried, so. I tried to look for the same motherboard, but I couldn't find it, uh, so I just looked for the, the next one. When you say the pin snap, pin on the USB port, is that The USB 3.12 or something. Gen, okay. The one two gen. But your motherboard was still working though. I think, yeah. What do you mean you think you, you did not? I didn't. I didn't test it because I I'd, I'd unplugged everything at the time and I was plugging everything in and I didn't know if it would work. So. Right. So basically, you just. I'm just. So it broke and you didn't want to take a risk. Is that what you said? Yeah, I just didn't touch it after that. Okay. Now, why did he want to upgrade? The reason is because on his existing motherboard, he did not have USB Type C which is this one, and he wanted that upgrade. Now, here's the issue. If you have this kind of problem, understand two things. Number one, I've mentioned in a previous video that when you do an upgrade or you buy PC components, you should always try to buy all the PC parts together for compatibility. And obviously, you should check for compatibility before you even buy. Um, now, the lucky thing now, he's got two choices. He could keep this motherboard and then upgrade the processor, right? That's one choice. The other choice, is to return this motherboard because he bought it from Amazon yesterday, still kind of boxed, you know, he could potentially return it under what um, legal and genuine pretense, that's between him and Amazon. But keep his existing motherboard, return this new one, and then for the uh, USB Type-C Gen 2, you can get a PCI card, which we've just checked on Amazon, it's about 25 pounds, and that will give him his USB Type-C Gen 2 3.1. So, Bob's your uncle, sorted. And then his monitor as well, I think he's not got a gaming monitor per se. It's probably a 1080p ultra wide or um, it's a 1440p, but it's only 60 hertz. And for this system, it's going to be an overkill and you should really get a decent monitor with at least 1440p and at, I would say 144 hertz is the sweet spot. Don't go above, it's going to be diminishing returns for you. Okay, so we've got the older motherboard here. 
this is the uh, eighth uh, denomination of the Asus. And that's the newer motherboard. So we're going to just take the CPU and put it back in the motherboard and do a post test outside of the case before we put it back just in case. Two quick corrections here. The motherboard, the previous one, actually did have a Type-C 3.1 Gen 2 back port. It was a front port on the motherboard itself, which was broken. And number two, he upgraded to the RTX 2080 Super. Yippee ki yay, mother truckers! We have a post, successful post. Now, what we've done is obviously uh, ignored the cooler because you don't need the cooler in most cases to be able to test for post. We have tested with the previous graphics card, the 1080 first, just to make sure the components were okay. So on there, we've still got the i7-7700K. And then the newer graphics card, 2080, we've got a pause. Jamie is dancing because it's what chuff now. Um, the only problem we had was he forgot to also uh, accommodate for 2x8 pin for the um, GPU. Yeah, but I had a cable. Well, lucky for him. So we managed to test it. And that's it. Done. Hungry Dory. Perfect. So now we're going to put this back into the case and off he goes, saving some money. Hopefully can send this other motherboard back. So talking to me about when you were looking for the motherboard, you wanted USB Type-C, Gen 2, whatever. Um, why did you not think uh, that there would be a problem with compatibility? Uh, did you just think because it's Intel, it should be fine? Is that what you thought? Yeah, I just didn't really think that was a problem. But clearly it was. So and the fact that yeah. you're trying to buy the same make and model, but an upgraded version, so version yeah. 11 instead of 8. So you thought in your mind, then it should be compatible. So the compatibility issue did not even come into your yeah, mind, yeah, right? Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> right. Yes. Um, what have you learned from this experience? Compatibility is the main factor when looking for things. Uh, I mean, if you were to advise someone or oh, do this next time, what would you do? What would you not do? First How of all, I would, I would look at the motherboard, look at its compatibility, look at your other parts, compare, like what they are. Uh, do you think there's a lot of people that make these kind of mistakes? Hopefully. For, <laughs> <laughs> for like I'm like the only one. Would you rather do the mistakes and learn from them or would you rather spend some time uh, going for some tutorials and learning? Uh, rather go spend some time on tutorials to be honest but I try I try to do tutorials but don't go in my head gotta learn bit by bit currently I play Apex quite a lot actually play a little bit of Overwatch sometimes I'm thinking of getting a new Call of Duty Modern Warfare I play random games to be honest a bit of everything Watch Dogs 2 <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. Shadow of the Tomb Raider MGS I'm gonna be okay for a while next thing I'll upgrade is my uh, processor, but that'll be that won't be for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Shameless plugging. Shout out to my friend Sam Delph, my friend Ben, and then yeah, go sub to Heal My Tech right now. <laughs> cool. Alright then. What I want to remind all of you is when you are going to upgrade or buy your PC, well, we're talking about upgrade here. You should think about where you want to upgrade following the Pareto principle, the 80-20 principle, uh, which means 20% of the input will give you 80% of the output. In this case, if you're a gamer and you want to upgrade your gaming features, the motherboard is the least of component to think about upgrading because it does not change a lot in terms of gaming. Okay, it's a marketing gimmick when they talk about gaming motherboard and gaming this and gaming that. The only gaming is the graphics card uh, that has to be as decent as you can get. And um, in terms of other things, uh, probably I would say, um, what else is for gaming? The monitor, yeah? As long as you get a decent graphics card and your monitor is a gaming monitor, if you're an FPS person, Definitely 144 hertz and definitely 1440p minimum. In terms of size and resolution, if you're sitting quite close to your desk, you can't really benefit much from uh, you know 4K on a 24-inch monitor. It's not going to you know be um, a good value for money buy. So think about that. Um, what else can we talk about in terms of gaming? Uh, and yeah, think about where you want to spend the money. So don't overspend on features and parts which will make no difference to your gaming but instead try to maximize your gaming ability with the right parts and i'm rambling at this stage i need to shut up so thank you for watching i will see you in the next one this was Ash from him helping you go from newbie to take it until next time peace out don't forget to check out 
the video up here and the playlist down here.